Hey everyone, welcome back to the second semi-final round, Code Green number four. Brought to you by myself, Dry Bear, and Squiddish. We are in the picking stage already, as you can see. The picking has already progressed far. The band came out for Arachne, and they say no. Yeah. Arachne band, they're like, we don't want to deal with your stupid spider, Brandon. Because it's <laughs> stupid and go away. And Brandon picking up Hercules uh, right out the gate there again. So powerful. We see him picked up. He's been picked up first every game so far, hasn't he? Hercules, yep. He sure has. First for one of the teams, Ridiculously at least. strong god. Yeah, I'm surprised he has not been banned out at all. But we see a very standard lineup coming. What are the teams, by the way? The left no, side Predator is himself. Team Predator. The right side is Team Blaine. Blaine, okay. Hello, Blaine. All right, so with Team Predator, very standard lineup here. Um, Brandon forced to go with a more standard jungler because they took his spider away, so he's going to be picking up the Fenrir. Um, again, with the physical damage pile. We've been. I guess this is just face punch day. Um, because they're going in with Hercules, Neath, and Fenrir, but at least they've got an Agni to back it up with, so they're not just, like, straight face punchery like last game. Yeah, definitely a little bit more of a balanced lineup here. You're going to have Loki picked up and Hebo, a lot of burst damage, but definitely the backup. Uh, I mean, it, it seems like Thor might have to go for a tanky build here uh, for Team Blaine. I mean, obviously with the Bacchus, I mean, you have a lot of burst damage with Loki, the Hebo, the Apollo, of course, and playing that, that carry role. Thor is probably going to be forced into more of a, a, a pseudo brawler, more of a tank side uh, pickup there just because they only have the Bacchus to lean on. But back over to uh, Team Predator, we have Fenrir being picked up by DM Brandon. If he did that well with the Arachne, the question is what can he do with Fenrir? Audi's going to be in the middle lane yet again, and Neath played by Infernal Mirage. I mean, they have a good lineup for both these teams here, and I'm excited to get into the match and get ready to go. But of course, we're here on the spectator timer. We have two minutes left on this timer before the game gets started. So we're going to cut to a brief uh, splash screen so you can get a drink, get a snack, get some popcorn, get some wheat thins, get some pretzels, or possibly some saltwater taffy, and be ready for the next matchup as we'll bring you the action as soon as it's ready to go. Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. Thank you for your patience. We are in the game. Looks like they have remade, and we're good to go. We've already introduced the players. We know who's playing and what gods have been picked. Everything is exactly the same as it was, of course, as with all tournament rules. If there is a remake ever, the, the god picks cannot change. They are exactly the same, and the same players have to play the same gods you can see on screen. So just a reset here. A little bit of one-minute delay, but we're in the match ready to go, and Fenrir is leading the charge. He says, let's get this set off right as he runs directly into the enemy team. Let's go, it's fighting time, says Brandon. He just runs around and gets shot in the butt by Apollo and is like, I was just kidding. I'm going home, please don't eat me. And Apollo, not content to just let him go, has to follow him over and give him a parting shot before he goes back to his team. They're, what, I'm kind of curious as to whether they want to start a fight here. They're kind of looking like they want to. Uh, Neat's just kind of taking in the face right now. She goes over the spirit there. They are going to engage. We're going to have a level one team fight. Driving Strike comes out from Hercules here. The uh, Fender Brutalize is going to be enough to tear Apollo down. Lots of damage. Hebo dropping really low as well. Turns on a water cannon. The three members of Team Predator. Do they have enough to finish him off, though? If that Brutalize comes off cooldown, he is probably going to die, but looks like he is just going to pull back. They are going to retreat from that one there, and that's going to be a quick. First blood for Team Predator. Freeze does come out from Ymir. He's still slapping Hebo. He's not content to let this one end. Ymir is coming in the stealth. Is he going to go? He drops one hit on Ymir just kind of as a drive-by, but I think that's the end of that fight. Yeah, a bit of a, a, a lost opportunity for both teams. I think Loki almost got that neath there, as well as the Heba almost falling on the opposite side of the map. Uh, just didn't have enough. I mean, obviously level 1, there's only so much you can do. Uh, but 1-0 now, Team Predator takes a little bit of an advantage. They're actually a large amount of advantage. They're about uh, 600, 700 gold above uh, Team Blaine as they take out the medium camps on, on either side, uh, taking a bit of a advantage. Uh, 700 gold exactly now. Uh, the teams are falling back to pick up their buffs. Uh, Agni's in the middle lane already to push this up towards the enemy tower. And Bacchus assists, and it seems like they, they just are not going to their lanes just yet. And everyone's just kind of jumping around doing stuff. Devo's still uh, hanging out level one very low in the mid lane there. Um, would not be terribly difficult for Agni to finish him off with a flame wave if he gets close enough. Look like he is, he is going to go home and get healed up. Agni's just going to dash through and take the time to get a whole bunch of free farm up there. And that's a pretty big gold advantage to start out for Team Predator as everybody got an assist. Like... I mean, obviously Herc didn't because he got the kill, but everybody else got an assist. This Fender comes in for a gank already. They're just going full ham here. Brutalize is going to follow Apollo as he dashes away with the moves, but it is going to be enough to get him away alive. But he's going to have to go home now, and Thor is going to get blown up wherever Thor just got blown up. They're just fighting everywhere. 
We're going to see Thor actually take as close as he can. We see him fighting the Cyclops in the jungle. His health is dropping lower and lower. And unfortunately enough, just cut too close to the chest. Ended up falling to the Cyclops. But they're going to come out. He's so close. He almost gets the Cyclops. And the Cyclops gets one more hit. They all oh, the Cyclops had one hit left. They will fall to the Cyclops, of course. This happens a lot with the jungling. A lot of times in your first few clears, you drop quite low in HP. If you don't have any assistance, if we saw Thor didn't really have any assistance there. Hebo was quite low. Uh, not able to help him out there. So Thor was at, will actually fall to the Cyclops in the jungle as we see uh, Fenrir kind of coming to the mid middle lane looking for opportunity to gank here. Denton OP Lee's nerf. That explains a lot then because I thought my spectator mode was bugged because nobody got a kill when Thor went down and now I, I guess I understand why Denton works for no faction. He's a freelancer. He's a free agent. He does what he pleases. What his little Cyclops heart wants and Fenrir is going to go in here with Ymir and just already start stealing buffs out of Blaine's jungle as Apollo is going to come up and be like hey! You quit that. The Fender's going to go in. It looks like he kind of wants to fight here, but Thor is here as well. So it's not really a good idea for him to stick around too terribly long. Bacchus is rotating around as well. There are now three people on Fender's face. He's going to jump to avoid the bell stun there. Uh, Bacchus and Fender are both actually pretty low. But obviously Fender being low is a lot bigger than Bacchus being low because he's pretty naturally tanky. As Agni rotates around as well and Thor tries to zigger barrage him but just does not quite have enough. Hercules in the right lane is going to solo down Loki while everyone's fighting in the left side jungle. And it looks like they're just going to disengage on this one. So now 2-0 uh, lead for Team Predator that are up by about 2,000 gold now as the meter comes out onto the Hebo in the middle lane. Level 5 on that Agni. Hebo having such a hard time after being pressured so early on in the beginning. Uh, probably, and this is one of the reasons why it's so important to head back and heal up before you go back to lane. Uh, if you have any kind of early game engagements, you saw him uh, go into the middle lane with very low HP and really couldn't push out or defend himself. Uh, it looks like Agni's going to go ahead and zone Hebo out. This is a correct decision um, in a lot of competitive situations because now Hebo is forced to come out of tower range to get any experience at all and will end up fall to this path of flames in the middle lane. A free kill for Agni as again and that's one of the reasons why you zone someone, because if they come out, you can easily kill them. So Agni's going to get a bit of a lead here uh, right off the bat. Agni sitting at about 2,900 gold versus the Hebo, who's at 2,100. So a 700, 800 gold difference between these two players. And that is a very big and early game advantage from the pullout here. And let's go ahead while nobody is killing each other for this current 30-second window and talk about the solo lane, because this one's a bit interesting. We got Hercules v. Loki. Um, they didn't bring the typical bruiser setup to their solo lane here. Uh, they brought a Loki, which is very interesting. I mean, he's more than capable. He's got the push, and solo lane is more and more becoming about not just push, but sustain, and Loki can do both those things relatively well. But set up against the Hercules, I mean, we've already seen Hercules beat him to death once by himself, and you got to wonder if this is an engagement that Loki is going to be able to come out on the better side of. Now, you know, one of the biggest things is if you have Odin in the side lane, it's hard to, you know, we, we've seen um, solo lane carries like Loki or Neath or on her go up against tanks and it's, it's easy for them in the beginning, especially Apollo, uh, to kind of burn down those tanks before they get fat because they have good early game basic attack damage. Uh, one of the biggest things if you're going to play a physical in the solo lane, you don't want Odin because Odin has natural physical protection uh, right off the bat. But we saw Hercules already get a kill on that Loki, so I guess the mitigate wounds as well to burst damage. There goes a meteor coming out on top of the Thor. Excellent play there from the audience. The Fenrir and the Thor were going head to head in the jungle. Now, Hebo's going to get jumped up from the backside by the Fenrir. There's the Brutalize. The Hebo ultimate comes through, but of course it follows through the title surge as a Neath ultimate's going to shoot this Broken Weave as he missed his ultimate uh, coming in from the assist and not able to help them there. But of course the Hebo and the Thor will fall, and that's just, you know, more awareness and positioning. Looks like Fenrir is looking for a rotation here. He does have Ragnarok available, so he could potentially just jump in Ragnarok Loki and carry him out of the tower. Although the question is, would they have enough damage to burn him down because he could just disappear or even ult away? Uh, he's going to use a disappear right now. Driving Strike from Hercules did miss, though. Loki's going to loop around, try to do some damage, and then ult off as he sees Fenrir coming because he wants none of those shenanigans. Meanwhile, Agni in the mid lane, just doing work 1v2 against Hebo and Thor. They came up to try and push him back, and he's like, I don't care. Thor is level 4. He doesn't actually even have his ultimate yet. He has been shut very, very down, which is interesting because he's top gold on his team. Well, he was when I said that. Now he's not. Loki jumping on top of the Fenrir, the double stun will come out, there's the rock and enough damage to finish off the Loki, possibly there's the hammer that hits on top of the Fenrir, is going to be enough damage to kill him, but the Loki is already dead, there's the Brutalize as the Berserker Barrage and the Monos of Tumor is done, the Earthbreaker will not land unfortunately enough, he's not in range to land the Driving Strike, there is the jump in front of the Thor, he takes a beeline to the left lane, or left side of the jungle, there a few hits will be able to do, the Brutalize come out, the teleport is not good, he angled it improperly and it went through the wall and there was no contact point 
for him to be able to deal with it. Apollo goes in there and dunked on top of the Agni. He's able to get the Agni kill. He had an opportunity to get the Fenrir instead. He gets the Agni. Yes, he gets the Agni with the base attack. Fenrir is going through the backside now. Apollo going to go in. The Neath ultimate lands on top of the Hebo, but of course there's no one around able to finish him off there. But again, a misproper angle on that Mirrors Attunement will prevent Thor from teleporting over the wall to save his own life. Interesting choice on the Apollo dunk there. Zogni almost got away, and Fender had enough health that probably one tick of Apollo's ultimate would have been enough to finish him off, but then he would have been stuck facing a full health Hercules, uh, which is a bit more of a hairy situation. So probably a good call at the end of the day there, as we are left with kind of the support tanks in the left lane, just slapping away at each other. And right now, Blaine at least has been able to put their first kill on the board with that Apollo dunk. But they're putting their first kill on the board versus the 7 Predator has and the almost 5k gold lead they've managed to scrape up not even 7 minutes into the game. Loki heading back into the side lane to face up against the Hurt. He's not a whole lot he can do at this point. I mean, Fenrir has been ganking so often. Uh, whereas Thor, I mean, it, just, it all came down to that early game engagement um, in the jungle. I mean, we saw Hebo drop very low in HP, sit in the lane, and didn't have enough to get experiences up. And of course, Thor was low in HP and had, you know, had to fight that, that Cyclops at low HP. Ended up falling to it because he's so, uh, you know, so weakened from that. Uh, Hebo trying to get some damage on top of the Og now facing off against this uh, Neath. Agni and Fenrir combination. Fenrir coming from the back to look for opportunity to jump on top of the Hebo. The box is quite low, of course. There goes the Intoxicate, a little bit premature, and unable to land at the top of the players who jump on top of him. Probably waiting until the Fenrir jumps. Now going up the Apollo. There's the Brutalizer doing some damage. The Serenade comes out, but the stun from the Agni and the Flame Wave, as well as the Ragnarok, will finish off the Apollo Path Flames, as well as the Neath Ultimate top of the Hebo. Hebo dropping so low, and there's Meteor landing on top of him. The passive from the Combustion will be able to finish off the Hebo. Now Berserker Barrage on top of the Fenrir. Fenrir going looking for the opportunity to finish off the Thor here. He has his ultimate. Can he go up in time? He doesn't have time to spin up, and the Agni ultimate will land on top of him finishing him off there and a triple kill for team predator and team blaine is on tilt now they gotta be a little careful because they got agni and fenner here deciding to hang out oh here agni is gonna go home but fenner is still hanging out with very up he's going home too well they had an opportunity where they were both very low on health but there's there's nobody really there to capitalize i mean even bacchus would have had enough had he been there to just jump through the wall and smash both of them in a non-existence with his fat because they were hanging out with very low HP, but I guess they decided they, it was a good call to the situation. They were very low, but there was no one around to do anything. And they're just going to go ham on Bacchus right now. Neath just laying into him, doing a lot of damage as Apollo comes over to try to support. So beautiful, only hitting Ymir, and Ymir not really caring because he's Ymir, as they just kind of pull back and disengage. I'm going to head back to this tower here. We see Hebo trying to push up the middle lane. The middle tower is down. Of course, the right lane is getting pushed up by the Loki with three players from Team Predator grouping up the jungle to take out both the damage buff as well as the blue buff. The damage buff will go to most likely the Fenrir. Fenrir actually has a movement speed buff, so did Emir or Hercules. Hercules picked up the damage buff and the blue buff went to the Agni. Agni heading back in the middle lane will have that CDR buff. Fenrir again counter jungle against the enemy Thor. Thor being forced so deep into the... Oh, he gets the last hit off right before he teleports. So it's just so hard to come back when you're this far behind. Neath ultimate at the top of the uh, Apollo will finish him up before he goes up into the air. There is the Hebo doing damage to the Arc. Actually doing a great chunk of damage, even though he's four levels behind. Fenrir looks for an opportunity to jump over the wall. It does jump over the wall. The Brutalizer will come out. No, the Red Rock will pick him up first, bringing him backwards. Agni tries without a meter, but it's going to be enough. The Brutalizer is going to come out soon. There's the Brutalizer. No, it's not up yet. There's the last Brutalized hit. So Hebo will fall in tower range. Apollo is dead as well as the Thor. Three players dead thus far. Predator takes a 13 to 1 advantage here at the 9 minute and 40 second mark. And this, at this point, this early on to the game, not even 10 minutes, 13 to 1, with a, we're looking at a 7, 8k gold advantage. Their DM Brandon has gone down. I mean, that, that's something. That's good. That helps. Uh, Apollo is going to dunk in and see if he can clean up Agni here. They might have gotten a little bit too greedy. Uh, so I'm asking him to hold my tongue here while I'm saying it's going to be very difficult for them to come back unless Team Predator does that and starts to get too comfortable, starts to get too greedy, starts to feel like they're an unstoppable force of destruction. They were both just sort of hanging out in Team Blaine's jungle, thinking they're fat and unstoppable. And Blaine's going to show them, no, you definitely aren't, and if you play like that, we will come back and win. Rock comes out from Hercules on top of the Loki. Loki needs to be able to blink out here. He does have his ultimate available to him. Thor comes over the gank, but Hercules is so tanky at this point. Here's Apollo as well. Dutch is in with the moves. There's So Beautiful doing literally no damage to him. Bacchus is also coming over. Hercules gets a tower on the right lane by himself while the engagements are going on in the middle lane. So free gold and experience for his team. And it's going to put him a little bit back in, but 27,000 gold to 19.5. So about 7.5k difference at the 10, uh, almost 11 minute mark for Team Predator. So Team Blaine needs to start grouping up and looking for some ganks and objective opportunities. And what's interesting is Team Predator, regardless of the fact uh, that they have mopped up all these kills, 
I mean, they got a big lead, but it's not as big as I would expect it to be with this many kill with this big of a kill advantage. I guess that's just because they're spending most of their time running around killing people, and Blaine is farming, which is offsetting that somewhat, I suppose. But even on top of that, they've also got two towers. It doesn't seem like as much of a gold lead as they should really have here. We see in the left lane, looks like they're got Bok is kind of cut out here. Neath is going to hit the spirit arrow, and but he's just going to jump away as Loki in the mid lane goes in on Agni, who's going to sprint away immediately and try to get out of dodge because there are a lot of members of Dim Plane bearing down on him right now and he does not want a repeat of what just happened because he does have a Doom Orb and that last death definitely hurt him pulling off a bunch of his stacks. It certainly did, something they really want to avoid. And we see two teleports being picked up by Loki and Thor. Loki's going to go ahead and teleport. Here comes Initiation in the middle lane. Neath Ultimate comes out as well. Looks like he's going to run directly into the Bacchus as the Apollo gets picked off. And a rock right on top of Bacchus. The stun lock comes out. Neath Ultimate into a driving strike. Guaranteed stun into a wall and a rock. There goes the Thor dunking down on top of the Fender who can easily just jump away. Jumps up and lands right down on top of the Thor. Thor taking a lot of damage here. Looks like the Earthbreak will be enough to finish off the Thor in the middle lane. And of course, the double hit from Neath hitting the Broken Weave that dropped from from the Thor will finish off the Bacchus there, or the Hebo in the middle lane. That's a 4 for 0 exchange. Another person in the middle tower. Loki is still up. Apollo just respawned. The question is, can they defend this, or will they just, you know, try to hold on to the Phoenixes and let the towers go? Well, it looks like they're going to truck on over and cash in their gold theory, but not before they rob Blaine of their jungle and any chance they have to try and pick up any real gold and try to come back. So with the Sentry Ward down to make sure they don't have any vision, they're just going to open up on this Gold Fury. And really, what is Blaine going to do? Blaine has managed to scrape together a spare change out of their car seat to afford a rank 1 hog. That's not going to be enough to contest anything. Predator's going to take this one with absolutely no challenge. Hogging's going to head over and clear out these medium counts after getting that Gold Fury. The big gold advantage is going to be in their favor. At this point in time, they have a big gold lead, and of course, Hercules picks up that tier 3 hand of gods. I love this pickup. It's an easy way to get back into a game, having that 25% guaranteed secure on objectives when the enemy team is not really picking up. You can see uh, Team Blaine doesn't have it. So at this point, I mean, they're they're going to be able to secure those objectives very, very easily, uh, whereas, you know, they only have tier 1 hand of the gods. Hebo actually goes for a Warlock Sash. I don't know if I can agree with this, this item choice, just because it's going to take so long and so much farming for Hebo to get those 100 stacks up, and he just really doesn't have the amount of of time and comfort that he needs to be able to pull that off. He's really trying to build some tankiness. I mean, I see what he's going for, considering he's posted up five deaths already. So he's just getting blown up by everybody because he's so squishy. So I like where his head's at, but I think he would have been a lot better served with an item like an ethereal staff or even just a hard protection item to stop him from getting destroyed by Team Predator as quickly as he has been. Because like you said, I mean, he doesn't have time to go farm. He can't sit in the land and play farm, though, because Predator will come and Predator will kill him. So it is a bit of a questionable item choice right now, but at least they're, they are trying to build a little defense now. They're realizing the momentum that Team Predator has, and they're trying to find a way to turn it around. As we see Agni dropping a bunch of bombs here on Apollo, just nuking him down. Thor is going to dunk down top and land the Tectonic Rift, but Loki's going to show up, drop his ult, and murder him too for trying. That's the participation award. It is death. So that's a good one-for-one -one trade there. Um, but right now, one-for-one -one trade is not what Team Blaine needs. Yeah, most certainly trading evenly with a team when they're that far ahead is not going to benefit you greatly, but that's exactly the kind of thing they need to be doing. It's just grouping up and coordinating their strikes to the point where Team Predator's greediness turns out to be their downfall. We saw Agni chasing forward with no towers to fall back to, no vision around him. He's basically uh, just, we had two awards on either side, but not no forward vision or aggressive vision. And just uh, decided to use his dash offensively and use all of his meters and cooldowns to kill off the Apollo and Team Blaine respond. That's exactly what they need to do to get back into this game. Bach is going to jump over the wall as Fenner forces him back in there. Looks like Hercules, Emir, and Neath, as well as Fenner to pressure this left side tower. And there's three players in the uh, jungle for Team Blaine kind of running over here looking to defend possibly this tier 2 tower. Well, they're definitely going to stop and pick up the theory camp right now because, I mean, the tower, that uh, tier 1 tower was sort of a lost cause. They wouldn't have been able to get there in time to top stop it. Predator has way too much damage. So they're going to stop and at least pick up a little XP from the Fury camp before they all rally around the tier 2 tower and try to keep Team Predator out. But Team Predator's like, you know what? You want to mount a defense? Whatever. I'll just go somewhere else. And they all just fork off back in the jungle to lay their wards all over the place and look like they're going to gather around for some something else. They pretty much just said, if you're going to defend this, we'll just leave. 
So we're going to see them kind of grouping up here towards the Gold Fury area. The Gold Fury is uh, uh, not there, of course, so it just got killed about a minute and a half ago, so that will be responding in a few minutes here. Uh, the Fire Giant is available and able, able to be picked up by either team. Team Predator is definitely looking to pick that up, but again, that's an opportunity for Team Blaine to get back into this if they botch the initiation and take too much damage from the Fire Giant. So just playing it safe, uh, going for the new strategy, the War of Attrition, where they kind of just tighten the noose little by little to the point where there's nothing Team Blaine can do. They're in a good spot right now. They're up about 14,000 gold, 18 to 4 here at the 16 and a half minute mark. The Warlock Sash is almost done for uh, the Hebo, and of course the Apollo has that Devourer's Gloves, but I think they just have too many stacking items to be able to get back in this game. They need to buy cheap, quick items to get enough damage and penetration to be able to hurt the enemy team and win team fights, and then later go for the stacking items or possibly even uh, more expensive items beyond that. I wouldn't even go for a stacking item at all at this point if I were in Team Blaine's shoes, just because if, when you get into the late game, you still don't want to be sitting in a lane farming. I mean, you, you have the opportunity to, you could, but it just doesn't seem like it's the world's best decision to be picking those up at all. Like you said, they want to be going for something quick and dirty, something cheap that's going to give them power. Because, I mean, look, right now, Fenrir's just running rampant. They're just in their jungle. Fenrir and Hercules are just there, doing what they want, just taking what they please. They're going to walk in and just grab this damage buff now. They are just absolutely doing what they want. They're getting so over-aggressive here. The Blaine, if they really got the opportunity, could capitalize on this fairly well. Um, Apollo getting cut out behind here. He's just going to ult away immediately because he wants not to see Loki go in on the Agni, who just immediately turns around and blows off three quarters of Agni's health. The Apollo ultimate does miss. Ult from Neath comes out, almost killing the Loki, but not quite enough as Bacchus does get torn down by Fenrir and Hercules. And he jumps in, lands the Ragnarok to kill Thor as well, picking up another two quick easy kills. It's so now 20 to 4 here for Team Predator. They're kind of waiting for that opportunity to push in and try for a Phoenix to try to push this further deeper uh, into the, the end of the game. We have two towers up, tier two for left lane and right lane for Team Blaine. And of course, all six towers, outer towers, are still up for Team Predator. So Team Blaine really needs to just group up and just be very, very together. Honestly, they just need to group up as a horde, as a, as a tight unit, and look for individual ganks and capitalize on greediness. As you mentioned, Squidish, you know, they shouldn't be able to just walk into an area unprotected without vision be able to pressure that uh, without any punishment as you see a Loki getting picked off there in the jungle as Team Predator picked up the Gold Fury and Team Blaine is in a really tough spot right now. Well, for one, like you said, they really need to blob together. They need to stop trickling in one at a time like that because that's just absolutely handing Predator free kills. If you show your face and you're alone, they're going to kill you. I mean, that's very simple. Not even a Loki is going to be able to walk up there and get out because he's too soft and squishy in such a frail little body. The Predator is just going to snap into a bunch of tiny pieces. And the other thing they do they need to do is they need to either decide a little faster whether they're going to commit or not. Because that last night where they lost Thor and Bacchus, um, Thor and Bacchus, uh, they all, the whole team kind of scrambled around a bit when Predator looked like they were going to start initiating. They kind of were like, I don't know if we want to run, I don't know if we want to fight. So they just kind of juggled around and didn't really do one or the other while Predator just blew up two people before they decided to pull out. I mean, if they're going to stick around, they need to be fighting, not just kind of trying to figure out what they're going to do. Yeah, definitely needs a lot more cohesion in their teamwork and their strategies here. Of course, uh, this is a single man sign up tournament. You will sign up by yourself and are placed randomly in a team and balanced by matchmaking. So sometimes, you know, teams have a little bit of conflict of communication, and sometimes teams have that kind of special factor, that chemical X, as Squidish likes to call it, uh, where, you know, the team gets, everyone on the team gets exactly the role they want to play, and then communication kind of works and everyone's very friendly and works together well. Uh, so sometimes we see the opposites here. So uh, an interesting strategy and an effect here from the single man tournament, tournament sign up. Up, uh, as we're seeing in this matchup here, Predator versus Blaine. So we're going to see uh, exactly how this works out here. There's the Earthbreaker, uh, Fender jumping atop of the Hebo. Hebo uh, actually avoids the uh, Meteors from there. There's a rock coming down, bouncing through, and hitting actually the Thor wall, bouncing off and killing the Loki. Now in initiation here, there's one Meteor on top of the, the Hebo who gets picked off right away. Five players for Predator pushing out the middle Phoenix, and this looks like it's going to be a very, very tough defense for Team Blaine. Definitely is. Apollo, though, doing his Apollo job down there in the left lane split, pushing that tower down as hard as he possibly can. He is at least going to tear that down, but right now, I don't know if that's the best decision. Because his team needs him right now to stand back and try to defend. They got that tower. That's nice. That's helpful. That's a golden fusion. But, uh, okay, it looks like Predator is actually going to pull out of the base here now. They look like they're not going to push around and immediately go for more. I'm not sure if they're rotating around to pick up the Fire Giant or another tower, but once Apollo gets this tower... Uh, I think he might want to come home and try to rally the troops here as they're going into the fire giant. 
He can actually go up into the air as that tower is falling, trying to be safe. The minions might actually not get it. He actually flew away a little bit too soon before. He's going to try and go into the fire giant. Maybe, maybe jump in on top of this. Try and steal it away. He dunks in way too early. It's half HP left. And it looks like he will pick up the Fenrir, but die himself. And the fire giant will be secured by Team Predator. Bok is kind of watering. Thor dunks down, avoiding that. Is going to be the Neath. There's Berserk Brush coming out as well. Is enough? Each gets popped by the Neath. Belly flop on top of it. They see how the bunch of gods on top of it. Neath backflips in place. And Bok is loses his attention and goes away from the Neath who will survive with low speed. Loki is picked off by the Arnie. Hevo going after the Neath. There's the crushing wave just barely missing it on the very edge of it. A meteor comes out of Frost Breath will finish off the Hevo with a slap from the Emir. Here comes the rock coming out from the Hercules as well. Berserker Barrage. There's the wall. Belly flops a wave but the Path of Flames will be enough and when it's all said and done a 1 for 5 exchange as well as a Fire Giant 14 Predator. And that was almost a fantastic play by Apollo there as he tried to come back. And he just, he left too early and he landed too early. He just, everything about him, uh, that was just a little bit. I, I mean, the effort was there. He tried. He had a good game plan. He just came too early. Uh, didn't actually finish off that tower, which the minions were able to push back off of. Duncan, the fire giant, is about half HP. He picked up one kill on the fender, which is good. Cause that's a pretty high priority target just because he is so fed. But, I mean, that's not enough to stop their momentum, especially when you're going to go in there and feed them a kill immediately afterward as well. And that is going to be the oh, surrender like going to be the surrender. Looks like Team Predator will be moving forward into the finals to face off against Team Dylan, the ones you just watched in the last semifinal round. Uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the stats and, and where that team, or where that game kind of went wrong. I mean, the, the main thing I would point at Squidish is just the beginning where they were in the jungle and they fought, 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 exchanged a lot. One kill went down. Unfortunately, they lost a kill right off the bat. Um, but you can see them, you know, kind of bouncing back a little bit in an awkward fashion. Hebo went to lane with low HP. Uh, probably should have just gone home as soon as he possibly can instead of trying to come back into that fight. To be fresh for the laning phase, and you can see the effect of it that it has when you have that little HP. You can't push out a tower, which means you're going to lose experience in gold and just be behind for long periods of time instead of heading back and healing up. We saw the same thing with the Thor. Thor was low HP and decided to continue jungling and ended up losing his life to the Cyclops. So it's very, very important if you have an early game engagement like that where you don't get the better end of it, that just head home, heal up, possibly get some more consumables if you have an extra 50 gold laying around from the passive gold gain, and then head back to lane refresh so you don't fall behind even more. Absolutely. And I mean, there's even beyond that, there's a psychological aspect. Getting zoned is just kind of like getting sat in the corner and told you stay there. And Hebo finally got to me, finally got here to you. He's like, you know what, I'm done with this. Poked his head out and just got murdered. So, I mean, you really do... You don't want to stick around lane, especially against such a bursty god like Agni in the mid lane. You don't want to stick around like that with low health. I mean, you just you can't overstate that. That's just, it's just, just not a thing, not a thing that you want to do. And we did see it was probably a good decision to not pull out any of the hard stacking items on Team Blaine, like Hard Seekers and Doom Orbs. So, but again, the Warlock Sash. I mean, I wouldn't have gone with any stacking items at all when they didn't really have the time to get around and try and farm. And you did uh, all pretty standard builds for the most part. Nothing really out of the ordinary or spectacular here. We saw Heartseeker coming off on Neath, a Doom Orb on Agni. Neath not dying at all, so taking very good advantage of that. And Agni only going down a couple times, but being able to do a lot of farming and murder in between. So he definitely wasn't going to have any issue keeping that Doom Orb up, Doom Orb up either. Yeah, certainly not a whole lot to be said about that match besides just just laning phase. I mean, laning phase is so important. I mean, people sometimes people don't really understand how much influence the picking phase and laning phase have, you know, so, such a, a, a huge impact on the game, and you saw there, the picking phase went well, but then, you know, right off the bat, you see them getting invaded in the jungle, and they set the pace, I mean, Team Predator came out, and, you know, in Predator fashion, they came right into the enemy, uh, you know, home base, the homeland of them, and started putting the pressure on them while they were sitting there, um, and just, get, you know, a few poor decisions in the beginning kind of got extrapolated towards the mid and late game, to the point where they just really couldn't fight back in many situations, and that's going to be the game there, so that was going to be the semi-final round, between Team Predator and Team Blaine, if you're looking at the brackets right now, we're going to be heading into the finals next to be Team Predator up against Team Dylan. And the question is, who is going to win that best of three? Of course, the the gem split up is first place gets 800 gems per person, second place gets 400 gems per person, and then third place will get 300 or 200 gems per person. So it looks like uh, Dutch and Blaine will be facing off in the, uh, the bronze bracket to win a little bit of gems. And of course, uh, the... Th Best of three coming up next to finals is going to be uh, whether or not you get 800 gems or 400 gems. And we'll be bringing that to you in just a few minutes when we check in on the status of the games. And we'll be coming back in just a few minutes when the action is ready to go.